Hello, we are looking today at fixed angled knife sharpeners. We're looking at three of them that increase in cost and also increase in capability. The good news here is that all three of these are great products. Any of these knife sharpeners, providing you have a realistic expectation of what they're gonna do for you, will serve you really, really well. They're all made by you know, good companies to good standards. So that's the good news out of the way first up. We're just gonna go into price and what you sort of get as you increase your, um, your, your spend and also just some basic tips and just some information about them and how they work. At the end, I'm gonna talk about a couple of other knife sharpeners that I have as well. So stay tuned. Right, now some basic tips before I get into it. When you're buying a fixed angled knife sharpener, get the good kit. So get everything or get a comprehensive roundup of that specific tools, you know, expansions and accessories and whatnot. There's no point in doing these things by halves. Fixed angle sharpening to me is all about getting really high quality sort of fussed over edges. It's a kind of a bit more of an enthusiast way of sharpening your knives. Not quite as much as like the full on artisanal bench stone, that whole other thing. These are great for people who may lack the hand-eye coordination like I do and uh, need a bit of a hand getting those really good edges and also for people who like to know exactly what angles are set in and what angles are on each side of their knife apex. Like the edge, I want it to be 17 degrees, I want it to be 15 degrees, I want it to be 25 degrees. With one of these devices, you can know for sure. So that's what they're all about. Another thing that I'll go into briefly is whatever you're planning on spending, put an extra 50 bucks aside in your mind to get yourself an angle cube. And I'll show you why as I go, but an angle cube is basically the way to make definitely sure that you've got the the angle that you think you've got. So we'll, we'll cover that as we go through them all. So the models we're looking at today is the Workshop Precision Adjust, and this is the expanded kit. Basic kit is fine, but as I said at the start, get the expanded version of whatever of these you're gonna get. So the Precision Adjust is a, a, a knife sharpener that holds your knife at sort of perpendicular to the table, parallel to the table, and the sharpening arm comes from below, and that is your uh, angle, and that's what you adjust using the, the uh, dial at the top there. You wind that up and down, changing your knife angle. It comes with, at the basic kit, one stone. The stone has three ways on it that rotates and locks into a detent as you go around. You start on the coarse, or the lower number of diamond stone, and you end up finishing on the ceramic home. Hone. Hone. The, uh, the expanded kit gives you extra arms, and it gives you a nice little box to keep it all in, which is cool as well. Uh, so the extra arms are gonna have more variety in grits, and you're also gonna get a leather strop hone as well. So leather hone for finishing and really adding a nice polish to your edges. You're gonna get a sort of a stock removal arm, which is 223, 2400 grit, and then you're gonna get uh, this one here, which is the honing arm, which is 600, 800, and then a ceramic plate. Then you'll finish it off with your leather. So that's what you get for the expanded kit. It really does make it a full-fledged system. And for that, you'll pay about 250 Australian dollars, which sounds a bit steep, but really it's about the cost of one good knife. So for the cost of one good knife, you can keep all of your knives with really nice edges. You can get up to very nice, highly mirrored polishes just using the expanded kit. No worries at all. I'll show you some footage of me uh, doing some magna cut on it, which is you know definitely not a an entry level steel. So it, it's a low cost kit compared to the other two, and you really can go full capability on the edge finish. What you're going to lose out on in terms of capability is the types of knives you can use on the workshop sharpener, and the increase in spend to the KME and to the TS Prof you are gonna start getting those slightly larger capabilities. So, putting this one aside for now, the KME is next, and a good KME setup is gonna cost you about 500 bucks. So yep, twice the price of the workshop. Uh, on the Australian stores that I can see, the unit and four stones is about $420. Then you want a base, and then you're gonna pay a bit of postage, and maybe even get yourself, or I would suggest getting yourself some form of polishing or honing um, feature as well. So whether it's the kangaroo leather strops and a couple of CBN emulsions or it's the glass tiles with the stickers that go over the top of them. So get one of those things as well, just a couple of mixes. But your basic kit's going to have four diamond stones, 
which is you know going to be something like a thousand, uh, maybe a hundred, sorry, three hundred, six hundred, then fifteen hundred, a similar range of stones like that, and then um, you just definitely, definitely want the base as well. The base is sold separately. The basic kit is designed to be sort of handheld. No, this is a this is a kit that works best when you're sitting down and really fussing over and having a good old time. Put your hands around the base and really get sharpening. That's how this guy really works best. Now the KME will fit much sort of larger knives in its jaws. You can get up to like a good old um, like this kitchen cleaver. This will go absolutely fine in the KME jaws. Um, it's held on so there's like a rubberized rubberized mouth part there that holds it. You tighten down this sort of nut here, very, very, very tight. You can go pretty tight on that. And you bring the arm around. And of course, a bit like the other one, it's holding the knife sort of parallel to the table. So it's just this top arm coming down that is providing the, the edge angle there. There are some indicators along the side, just as there's indicators along the side of the workshop. However, you do really notice a variance in this. And so what you're gonna wanna do is get your angle cube, turn it on, zero it on your table and then go like so or like so and that will be your true angle so right now this is showing me it is at 1585 so whereas the machine here is indicating that it's much higher than at like 20. so you can really do your micro adjusting like so much much easier obviously i've got this so it's facing you guys but for me to do it myself i'll just swivel around and this is exactly how I do it, up to 17 degrees. And again, this is what's causing it. Look at this. Whoops. The um, the edge is so much further away from the the mouth part, <laughs> mouth parts that it does add some angle to it. It steepens out that angle. If this edge was finishing back here, closer to the the tool, then the thing droops a little bit further and the angle is different. So that's why an angle cube is really essential. There's a lot of variances that happen with these due to the kinds of knives you're gonna be using. But these jaws in general will open wider and the arm reaches wider and the stone is much broader than the work sharp stone. So we're gonna have you know a greater reach, a greater ability to do greater stock removal on bigger knives. So you really are paying to go up for that level of capability. This is about where I'd stop on the KME personally, because generally speaking, with just one contact point, the pressures applied to either end of the knife does start to create a bit more of a lever effect and you can eventually get some, and it's happening now because I haven't got it fully tightened down, you can get some movement, which just becomes a bit of a pain to adjust. A little tip when you're using these sorts of systems is to get your Sharpie and you draw a line right where the right where the attachment clamp is going onto the blade and just sort of box it around like that. That way you can see really easily when it starts to migrate slowly that um, you can see more on one side or another. It just, just helps you keep track of it as you go. But the KME can happily do big knives like this, no worries at all. Whereas the workshop, really great for little pocket knives. I'd go up to about maybe the size of this, this SE4 in terms of both thickness. So this is about, you know, three sixteenths thick and in terms of blade length as well is where I would stop at the workshop. But most of us are just pocket knife guys anyway. So for pocket knife guys, you can get as comprehensive an edge as you want just using this guy for a pretty good price. KME is where you're gonna to wanna to move up if you're gonna do bigger things or if you wanna just spend less time on it. Thing about it is, the wider your abrasives are, the bigger everything is, the less total strokes you're gonna take and the less you know time effort, the longer your stones will last. All that sort of stuff really starts to kind of come full circle when you're upgrading costs just a little bit. Now, upgrading costs even further to about the 700 Australian dollar mark is this TS Prof. So the TS Prof, as you can probably see, is quite an apparatus. It's got two clamps, so you can hold a really big knife in here, like this cold steel 12 inch Bowie knife. And there's maximum range of movement on this arm. See the KME, it's eventually gonna stop at a certain point. It's gonna stop there and there and there before it starts steering the whole the whole jig around, right? So until it's, you know, the whole jig starts being led around. Yeah? Workshop can go pretty wide either side but the knife is limited by the jaw size about how wide you can go. The TS Prof, you can go basically 360, 
You could shop in one of these. You could shop in a chakram on this thing if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, just generally speaking, everything is just bigger and more robust and really suited for doing big stuff like this. You can absolutely just take one of these aluminium locks off or locking arms off and screw them and point it more to the middle of the um, jig and just do a normal pocket knife, that's what you do. But when you, I've got it sort of set up for a big knife here to show you, you've just got maximum reach. You can really sharpen that well. And uh, you know, obviously you'll be loosening up your, your little bits and bobs and getting maximum arm spread and all that sort of good stuff. You get it tuned to, you know, tuned to sharpen about any big knife or really any knife. So maximum level of capability, but for the maximum price as well. Now, so for this maximum price, you are also getting maximum stone. So you see here, that stone as to that stone, as to this stone here, family portrait going there. there. There is a fair variance in terms of they go, they're both much wider than this guy here. And then this guy is about a third longer than this guy here. So that's another one of those things that really does kind of make it easier and it makes every sharpening job a bit quicker as well. So to sharpen a three inch knife on the TS Prof would be quicker than on the KME, which would be quicker than on the workshop. So that's sort of how that goes as well. In terms of results, all three of these, I'm really happy to say, have really high quality abrasives. So Workshop do a really good diamond CBN type stone. The KME stones are great. I've had to replace them once in easily over a thousand sharpenings and only a couple of them as well. Eventually the diamonds kind of either wear out or fall out or whatever. And the Venevs are holding up really, really well as well. And I've probably done about, I'd say two to 300 sharpenings on the KME. So all three are pretty well like regarded brands of abrasives. And that is really what you pay for for these systems here. So even the Workshop, it ain't super cheap compared to like the eBay sharpeners you can see. Coming apart, all falling apart. <laughs> uh, any sharpener that's really selling for less than $100 and claiming to have a lot of different options and abrasives, you're not gonna be getting very good stones at all. Watch Green Beetle, he picked up one of those Ruxin clamp bench top stone sharpener things and everything's plastic and everything just starts falling apart. There really is a quality threshold that you need to sort of meet and I would argue it's about here for a fixed angle sharpening system. The, if it seems too good to be true, then it's most likely going to be other. The diamonds will be, it'll just be like aluminium oxide and maybe not even diamonds, but even if it is diamonds, they might not be particularly well attached into their matrix or the if they're stones, which I would argue that we're probably a bit beyond bench stones for, uh, it's probably a bit controversial to say. There still are obviously really keen bench stone crowds like Japanese whetstone people, but diamonds, plates are really where it's going for most modern steels nowadays in terms of just being able to remove stock quickly. And it's a bit like the adage that a sharp knife is a safe knife, a positive grind, a positive grit on a sharpening stone. It's easier to correct mistakes if you make a mistake. So say, I remember I'd be stone sharpening and you know, you're on a really fine stone or you know, and you, you're eventually you're, you're starting to work an edge up and then just that one little hiccup and it's done and you got to take it all the way back. He, even here, if you drop the knife face down out of the clamp and it whacks into the ground, a diamond stone will have you back where you were going within about five or 10 minutes. And that's sort of, I, I really recommend diamonds in terms of everything. Um, KME will sell like an Arkansas stone set. I just don't even worry about it. The finer stones can be good for honing, but in terms of your stock removal and your actual sharpening, the guts of it, just get, my basic advice is just go diamonds. Unless you've got a real kink for like a, a high a high end, you know, soakable Japanese water stone or, or something, I'd really keep diamonds. And all these three do really well uh, with their diamond abrasives. And uh, they really do stand the test of time so far as well. Um, yeah, no qualms about the quality of any part of any of these machines. Look, I can speak the most about the KME because I've had this one the longest. Uh, the first things to go on the KME were the, uh, the rubber on the jaws. Sometimes you need to just replace that or glue it back down. And the little eyelet, this little eyelet that holds the arm in place can under certain circumstances just kind of pop out and you'll just find, oh shit, you'll notice when you're sharpening, this will sag down. It won't be the end of the world, but you just kind of need to pop it back in. It's got a detent that holds it, click. But as the machine ages, that does weaken, but KME will send you a new one. I think it'd be a nominal fee and they'll replace any part of this. So it's fine. It's got the full service capability as well. 
Um, TS Prof, I haven't noticed anything really even capable of going weak yet. The jaws are aluminium. I wondered if they would malform, but they really haven't. I've left these reefed down on big, thick knives and no alteration in the shape or whatever. And you really do, you torque these buggers down like, you know, you properly, you screw your knife into this and you will not have any give or any movement. Rock solid, but expensive, but full capability. Really solid, pretty high capability, not as much. Kind of pricey, but a lot of options as well. A lot of really great options. A little, you, can, you can really geek out on the KME accessories. Lots of cool stuff. Really respectable, more basic, really easy to use. Probably the easiest to set up and get going with is the WorkSharp. It will do all of your pocket knives to the same level and capability of these two, really. I mean, maybe some of the really far-flung KME stuff you can probably get slightly higher end. But really, even for me, and I'm a steel edge snob, really happy with the polish that these um, that these stones and the system can put on a pocket knife as well. So it's a good news video. All three of these are bloody great. And it's just kind of about what the capabilities are that you might be seeking and how much you're, you're happy to spend. So hope this has been of interest to you all. Um, you can watch me use all of these in many, many of my knife videos. You can probably just search Cedric Ada and then the name of the machine, TS Prof, KME, Workshop, and just see me sharpening and mucking around with all these things for more of an extended kind of backlog of videos and whatnot. But yeah, really super happy with all three of them. There are other fixed angled sharpeners. There's some that hold the knife um, pointing towards the sky like this and then come downwards like that. Um, those are all, as far as I know, they've got their proponents. People love that as well. There's a new cold steel one that's quite uh, economical by the looks of it. There's a lot of good options. All I would hesitate is, uh, I just offer a bit of like, if it seems too cheap and it's claiming to have you know a whole component of stones, the stones are gonna be what lets you down. And um, it's really nice to get an all-in-one sort of kit like workshop, so it was especially where, you know, a really little clever little design of switching them around like that. And you can really set your watch to work sharp abrasives. They're all absolutely fine, even if they are a little bit on the small side. So I would really entry level at this guy and you could stop at this quite happily. It's just if you're gonna move up to bigger knives or you really wanna geek out, you might wanna start looking at the KME for about 500 Australian, what's that, 350 American, or the TS Prof for about 700 Australian, probably about 500 American buckaroonies. So there we go. Now, people always ask me as well, how I'm doing with the Tormek and what I think about the Tormek and if I still use my other systems. So let's do a bit of a roundup of those two. All right, so on this table are my other sort of sharpening options that I have around the home. Uh, here is a set of water stones. This is my grandpa's old water stone sharpening box. It's got a glass tile on the top and that's for, I've actually got a bit of aluminium powder that you can use, make a slurry and flatten out your stones again on the glass. That's what that was for. Never had to do that myself. Uh, inside, I've got a, a 4,000 grit king stone, Japanese water stone, and then I've got two Vesta stones. Vesta are a great, Vesta make a great stone. Um, two Vesta stones, arms out. Two Vesta stones, I think I've read it, so 700 grit Vesta, and a, I believe, 1,000 grit it should be. Yeah, 1,000 grit Vesta uh, water stone. So you soak these guys in water, and then you can usually keep the bottom of the tray full of water, and then have whichever stone you're working on attached in between these clamps on these arms that I've got at the top here. So it's a, um, a bit of an a bit of an old-fashioned system, and obviously predating like diamond emulsions and things like that, and diamond stones even. Um, but yeah, it's you know it's quality. It's um, a bit more you know prop it takes a bit more of a of a learning of a craft really to sharpen your, your blades on a system like this. And of course the Kingstone, same philosophy, but it has its own little little carrier there. You know, keeping um, keeping stones flat can be a bit of a challenge and they're expensive too. So this this set here, this is probably about $400 worth of stones plus the, the you know, I don't know if you can even get anything like this anymore. I think it's King Brand, the whole thing. Um, yeah, again, there's no cheap way to do this well. So, and this is stones. If you're looking at good diamond plates, sometimes they're upwards of $300 per plate and fairly too, because they, especially if they're going all the way through and not just on the surface, you can pay a whole bunch. Um, more of a learning curve, but you can absolutely get amazing results. But again, not quite that same thing that I like about really dialing in your exact edge angle. So great, but 
yeah, I prefer the other. Now the WorkSharp automatic sort of sharpeners, I have generally, this is, this is what I used to use for everything. So it's got a little belt on it. It's like a mini belt sander really is what it is. And you put on a knife guide to put, and this one does you a 20 degree per side edge. So 20 degree angle, you grab your knife out. Where's a knife that I can use? You grab your knife and then you, this is just a honing belt. You put your knife in there and you pull it through. And really it puts a good rudimentary, very sharp edge on a blade. I used to use it for all my pocket knives. It's always a, con always a convex edge, like a micro convex at the very least. But I do have some questions about it heating up the blades and just to be able to be bothered to dunk them in water between, you know, sharpenings. I've just, I've kind of backed away from using this for my actual pocket knives. I use it all the time for my axes because I can just, I can freehand an axe, you hold it up. You can bring it to the tool and then you can dunk the axe, whatever, you can do it a bit better. And for my big machetes, my lawnmower blades, absolutely still a really viable tool. But for my knives, I've kind of gone off of it a little bit. I use this guy all the time though. So when I can't be bothered setting up a fixed angled system, I will absolutely just smash out a quick eyeballed 17 degree on this guy here. Workshops, abrasives, I know from this thing here are excellent. I've sharpened so many knives on these two diamond plates and they're still really nice and gritty and fine. Really, really good. You can, once you get the hang of this, it's almost, if you're not too bothered, this is almost your one-stop shop. I say this so often, but this is the best like under $70 you can spend in the knife hobby out of anything, knives included. Such a good tool. And then lastly is the Tormek. So this Tormek here is like a, I, I, I reckon this is more for, you can do knives on it, but I would argue this is more for your like carpentry tools and things like that. So this is a powered whetstone sharpener. So you, you turn it on and the whetstone spins, a leather strop spins and leather, leather strops actually attached to the, the driving wheel of the whole whole machine. Um, you can use this to set your angles with it. Um, I've got a few Tormek videos going. Um, keep the water in there so it doesn't heat up the edge and it spins slow enough that it probably wouldn't do too much anyway in terms of that. Now, the Tormek is very, can be very unforgiving. So the Tormek can, if you, especially if you're using it on its rougher grit, can really, with a slight wobble, when you've got a knife going along the jig at the top, so you'll grab your, Grab your knife jig and you'll uh, put your knife in there. And then you will run this along this top bar here. So it keeps the knife level. Um, and you will run this against the wheel as it turns. And you will pull the knife away to the tip. There is just the application of an unsteady or sometimes an untrained hand against the moving wheel can still cause you some problems. I ruined, I've ruined several knives on the Tormek until I got the hang of it. And yeah, it's just a certain kind of edge that I just feel, I will save it for my, um, not a knife like this holds for us all the time because I don't really care. But yeah, I'll save it for my, my more industrial purposes. I'll sharpen my chisels on this all that sort of stuff where you don't need to be so worried about like a, a tracking style motion because there is still a little bit of give. And the reason I love fixed angle sharpeners is because I don't have the steadiest hands. I'm a little bit uncoordinated. And so this for me, even with the level of mechanical assistance it offers, it doesn't quite, it's not quite unco proof just yet. So I would probably hesitate to recommend the Tormek for everyone, but it is a great tool for people who know how to use it. And you can use, you know, the angle finder, you can really dial in your angles, no worries. It is really cool that you can set your stone, you can set your stone to either rough or smooth, but it'll, it'll mirror match. It'll match what you just wear this down a little bit and it'll take on either the, the, the fine or the coarse. It's really, really cool technology. And this is the T4 model. You can get the Japanese wet stone wheel for the T4, but if you go up to the T8, which is what I would do, if you are gonna get a Tormek, right? You're gonna get a Tormek, get the T8 or the, the model with the 250 millimeter wheels, right? Because they have diamond, they've got blackstone, they've got much more, and you can use it for almost, you could almost start making knives with the um, the blackstone. It's so, it's so good, the silicon wheel. So yeah, it's just the silicon oxide wheel, I think it's called. 
So just not quite for me as just a knife hobbyist guy, but if you have more industrial size applications, I think Gary Creeley, one of my favorite custom makers, I think he uses his Tormek for a fair bit of his finishing. So if you get the knack for it, really capable tool, but for everyone else, as cool as it seems, I don't think it's quite for you. So just my little advice on that. All right, so what do you reckon? Generally speaking, you've got three really great options here. Um, Worksharp, KME, TS Prof, and uh, you really can't go too far wrong with any of them, as long as you know those basic limitations, which frankly are pretty obvious just by looking at them. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed, hope it's been of some interest to you, and I'll see you all in the next film. Goodbye.